Okay, here's all the materials we need, not a lot. Um, this is a pearl, let's see on my sheet here, it's a half drilled, or you can use a fully drilled pearl, which I'm doing here. Um, this is a button pearl, eight to nine millimeters. Then for your ring shank, you'll want to use uh, a rectangular silver wire. This one is uh, 0.236 wide by 0.059 thick, which is approximately 15 gauge, and you'll need a sufficient amount for um, your ring size. I will have a link to my my uh, ring size chart here. I'll have that on the information section here, so you need to calculate how much material you'll actually need for that. Um, and then you need a small length of sterling or argentium round silver wire uh, in this case it's about six centimeters long and that's all you need for materials the tool list on the other hand is a different story so you can um, if you have a rolling mill you can roll your stock um, you can roll a bunch of it and then cut it to size I just cut this to size and rolled it and figured I'd just trim it again um, I haven't done any finishing I just used my um, bench here to cut the metal you could use a saw jeweler saw two two hot blades two slash zero blades would uh, work in a saw frame to cut it um, and if you have heavy duty shears that are capable of cutting almost 15 gauge um, then you can use those two to trim your metal down to size um, so I am going to recut this to size and then we'll move on I think I need to explain to you how to create a ring shank uh, how to determine your size this is one method using a ring blank chart that I will have a link for so I think I already mentioned that I'm senile you know that anyway blabble on 15 gauge metal 15 gauge metal the ring blank chart has a uh, gauge for six the size for 16 gauge if using 16 gauge and if using 14 gauge so what i did was i added these together divided by two which gave me 61.05 which is an average of these two which is probably approximately somewhere in here a 15 gauge because this is over my shank is over four millimeters wide I need to add an additional 0.5 of a millimeter onto it, so I come up with 61.55. So what I need to do now, because I have really non-flat edges and I need really not, I re need really flat edges, is I'm going to finish one of the ends and make it perfectly square, and then I will take my measurement off of that square end and. Um, adjust maybe leave myself a quarter of a millimeter or so half a millimeter to finish the other end so you can actually add so we'll go back to what I scribbled out you can actually add a, an extra half a millimeter onto your measurement so it'd be 6205 but I'm gonna do it the other way because that way I have less to adjust for and it'll be easier to get it closer to the perfect size. If this turns out to be slightly too small, we can stretch it on the uh, ring mandrel down the road, but it's going to fit perfectly because it has to. So I'm going to uh, set up for doing the miter cutting vise and show you also an alternative method for squaring the ends if you don't have a miter cutting vise. I'm pretty sure I've talked about using this tool in about 18 videos, so um, I'm not going to talk about it too in depth. I also have a web page on how to use this uh, on nancyltHamilton.com. Remember, files. Oh God, that was bad. Files work on the push, so I'm pushing, lifting, pushing, lifting. And what I want to see here. And feel here I don't want to feel any catching which means that I've still got metal on the surface 
and you want to feel it feel, feel you want it. oh my god i just had a colonoscopy yesterday so please forgive me <laughs> i'm recovering um so you don't want to see any material sticking out here so now you've got one perfect edge except it has burrs on it let me grab some sandal paper there we go so what i do especially on this perfect edge is i lay the material i am trying to do this so you can see flat on the sandpaper and push my finger down on that end and drag the reason i'm doing this is because if i do it at an angle i will point make a point on this and you always have burrs after filing so expect them you also have them on the sides you want to get rid of all the burrs because they interfere with the join that we're going to be doing when we solder both ends of the ring shank together. So now from here I can measure off of my ring shank to my whatever the heck I wrote down there. 61.55 plus a quarter. So I, I put my line on the end of the, uh, on the, end of the shank material. God, I already forgot the number. How's that for funnier than heck? Okay, 61.5, almost 62, pretty much. One, two. So right there. And then I, I do a real fancy uh, method of marking. I push the ruler flat down on a flat surface and kind of make a square and then draw my line here. So I'm going to go cut this on my shear. You can file this, uh, file this, saw this, um, whatever you want to do. So even though I have a, a type of bench here that cuts square, I still don't trust this. I always go back to my miter cutting vise. But I want to show you, if you don't have a miter cutting vise, by the way, I've said this a million times. Where is the other one? The difference between the cheap and the expensive, at least the one I got, is 5000 Now, this is supposed to be go sliding up and down easily. And I literally, I mean, I oiled this too. You can uh, probably see the glistening oil in there. It is really stiff compared to this. This just moves like a dream. And the reason you want it to be smooth is because when you're trying to line this up in here, you want it to drop down on top of it nice and easily so that you, you can push it up against that tooth. It's not as easy as it sounds. With this, I've got to use, I need three hands essentially. So don't buy the cheap one if, if you can. I mean, I'm sure having a cheap one is better than not having any because the method I'm about to show you is not nowhere near as accurate so you um once you're your flat file and you want to try to hold your hand as square as possible and drag down the file face like this this is one way to do it there are everybody has different ways another method is to cut extra length on your stock shape your ring and then saw through have the have the metal cross over like that and then cut right where that mark is on my finger cut through there that's another method to do it um, this is how I do it sometimes sometimes I do it the other way so anyway that's and don't forget even if you're doing this method you're still going to end up with burrs so you know do your drag method to take those burrs off before uh, we do anything before you do anything else. So I'm going to put this back to minor cutting vise, get that done. Then we need to go and kneel this. At least I hope that's what we're doing next. Well, i am now been proven to be an incorrigible liar. I can't help myself. <laughs> we're not going to kneel this quite yet because I want to kill a couple of birds with one rock here. Um, I'm, we're using this pre-stamped disc. Uh, you can stamp them at home if you have a hydraulic press, which I do. I actually have some that I've already stamped by hand, but this is from Rio. And it's, I don't know if you can see it, but there is a ledge on here. All stamp pieces tend to have these ledges. So we want to take that off now. 
and the way I'm killing two birds with one stone is I'm going to go ahead and anneal my ring shank, but I'm also going to torch clean this at the same time. I almost lost, is that, I lost my, there it is. <laughs> so I'm also going to bring over my 20 gauge wire and um, heat clean that. So these are all going to go get heat clean. And I really believe I am actually going over there now. The wire I'm going to keep over here on the edge because I'm probably not going to have to do too much on that heat wise. There is a little, little uh, tape residue on here that I need to burn off, but I want to be very careful because these are hugely different in their weights. And it'd be simple as heck to melt that wire if I wasn't paying attention. And I'm going to do the copper. On this, I'm looking for it to turn multicolored and gray. It's like you hit the colors and then it goes gray. Yeah, that looks like a good color. And then the wire, I'm just going to run down here a little bit, especially this end with the tape on it. This doesn't actually need to be nailed, it just needs to be clean. Okay, while the um, ring band is in the pickle, we're going to prep our discs here. So take your disc. This is a center finder. You could use a um, template, circle template, but I'll tell you it's a pain in the butt. These are like 12 bucks or something, maybe even less. And uh, I'll have a link. So where all these lines intersect here about is the circle, the center of your circle. Now you need your steel block and a punch. You can make these from a na nail. Uh, this was a nail that I just heated the steel up and twisted and then tempered it uh, and stuck it in a dowel. So I like to come in at an angle so that I can see wh exactly where I'm putting the point, line it up, and give it a really good whack because we're going to be, um, or two, because we're going to be putting these in the dapping set and this could disappear. We're not going to drill until after we've domed it. So you want your divot to be face up in the dapping punch set. Here's so it'll be like that when you're making your dome shape. Actually, we could probably smoothly transition into that right now. See how smooth that was? We have transitioned. So face up, divot up, centered in the recess. Find the punch. I must have started with a different one last time. Let me check. Ah! Let's see. We want it to fit in there. We don't want it to be too big because you'll damage your punch like this it'll the steel will cut into the side of the punch which is it is that it yes all right so i want to make sure it's still centered hopefully it won't hit the camera so i'm going to give it three good wallops try to keep it straight then i'm going to go to a smaller one right here three big wax I can go to another one that's slightly smaller, find the dap. And I, at this point, I'm going to kneel this. It's gotten work hardened. So we'll go do that. So everything's um, annealed, uh, divoted, and we're going to just start making this a little smaller. So I'm going to do the one, two, three, and then go to the next smallest. And you can make these cups any size you want. Um, but remember that pearls are fragile and this is cup acts as a protector for the pearl. So we have a cup looks about like that. Then what you're going to do is uh, take it and put on some sandpaper. 400, 320, probably 320, then four, or just four. Ow, there goes some more fingernails. And what you want to do is have a nice flat. This is not ready, so I think 320 would probably be better to start with, and then go to four. But you want a nice flat edge, and then roll this edge or um, sandpaper, please. 
terrible assistant here. You could do this too, where you run, you just want to take any sharp edges off. And rest your hand on something. Otherwise, you're doing this and you're not, it's not as effective. So just keep cleaning up. I have nine of these to make, so I will be back with you in a minute. I have class in four hours. Okay, now it's time to drill out our little divot that we made earlier. I have a 0.80 drill bit in here for a 20 gauge. I'm lubricating with drilling into a hunk of beeswax here. Perpendicular. You want a really nice sharp uh, drill bit because you don't want this thing spinning around and I want to keep this straight up and down. No wiggling. And that's how you should be able to drill through. So we are through there. We may have to adjust this a little bit for our wire. So I'm going to get that in check. Perfect. It's a nice tight fit. That's why if you don't wiggle your arm, you get these nice tight fits. So if your drill bits are dull, get rid of them, make them into tools, punches, whatever, but don't drill with them, especially on these tiny little things. Uh, and lubrication will make them last a lot longer because not only does it lubricate them, but it keeps them cooler because it's lubricated and when they're cooler, they don't overheat. And if they overheat and they turn blue, some of your tips may be blue or purpley colored. That means that you've annealed the metal so it's soft and it will no longer hold its edge. So there's two good, really good reasons that all relate to one thing, keeping your drill bits alive longer. So now I think we'll get set up to bend some ring shanks, something I hate to do. There are several ways that you can bend a ring shank and I don't think any of them are very fun. Um, I'm going to show you on this. This is the Pepe Tools ring bender. It has these Delron or nylon parts and then these, see, whatever they're called. They come in different sizes. Um, I'm using this, a smallish one because I want um, to make a tight curve and I start by putting it in and bending my ends. So this handle cranks like that so it goes around and we have our hook I'm putting it I should be keeping it flat on the floor of the tool and it's really nice tool it is a really nice tool to use with this really heavy gauge metal uh, especially if you're an old fart like me so see, we're starting to get the shape. Let me just bend it around a little more until it meets in the middle. I still have to do some hammering and futzing. And I never understand why it gets off like that, but that's a pull. You can use pliers up here to pull if that gives you more leverage. And I'm just going to tighten it down a little more. The rest of it's gonna have to be done with hammer or mallet, I should say. So see, this has gotten us pretty close to where we need to be. Uh, I need to line up things a little bit better. So now we're going to move again. Now I need to level this up just a bit. It's it's pretty close. It'll probably get worse after I hammer it. I've been kind of playing around using the dapping blocks block because I figure it it's round and it keeps it from getting too out of shape. It's kind of been working. And plus, it's steel, so it's resisting. I need a slightly bigger hole. I don't want to mar the metal. Yeah, that feels better. So, what I'm going to do is um, look at my gap here and make sure that I don't see a lot of light through there. Like this end right here is way too far apart. So, I need to hammer on this side to push this side down. So, I'm going to tap on the outer edge. And on both sides, so that means I'm going to tap on this side. It's the thick, thick stuff that's a pain in the butt. So now I've got an overlap. I'm going to pull apart. 
and I'm flattening it down a hair here. If I start to see that it's curling in in here, like I don't like the way that looks right in there. I'm going to move you again. Ah, you can use either a ring mandrel or I just put a dapping punch in here just to kind of flatten that out again. So we're going to move over to the traditional way to doing it. All right, here we are at yield pipe vise with yield ring mandrel. Um, I am going to go up to about, a, this is an eight, remember, so I'm going to go up to about a seven. I'm going to curl these edges. And I'm going to go ahead and hit it on this side now because this is a conical shape, so you want it even. And you can count and do this evenly which would probably make more sense, but see how we're starting to curl around. I'm going to go back on my seven, or maybe six and a half, two, three, four, five, and just moving in towards the center. Okay, you become an acrobat sometimes. I'm going to move up to six, really whack this dang thing. Okay, I'm going to switch to a smaller mallet, mallet, and I want to tap this down a bit. Uh, we're going to be using a, where are you, finger-shaped mandrel, where it's wider up here, narrow down here. I like this shape, it keeps, your, it keeps it from rolling, and especially when you're going to have something rather heavy on top. Um, the other reason is this is flatter and it'll make more sense for soldering a, a domed item on top of it than a fully round one, more surface area. To adhere the, um, the disc tip. So there are several ways you can put your ring to solder it. Um, I left my tripod at Chimera so I've rigged up this goofy thing with a screen and a trivet for enameling, and there's a nice little dent in there to rest the ring in, so I can heat from underneath, but my flame is very close to it. I'd rather have it back farther, um, but I just did one that way, so I know it works. And then another option is after warming it, um, putting my solder across the seam this way and then heating from this side. So I'm going to do that now. And then the other option is to um, put your solder on and once it's adhered, pick it up with your cross locks and hold hold your flame, you know, like that. So I'm going to do the sideways model right now. Okay, he's warm. Chunk of solder. That's a little flux brush. There's my seam. It's the only problem with this is you've got to deal with gravity. Okay, I don't know if you can see that, but it's um, across the seam. So now we're going in for the kill. Warm up. And this, the only issue with this is I have to lay over to the side to see the solder flow. And the reason for, this flowed by the way, uh, the reason for heating on the opposite side of the solder is to pull the solder through the ring. So it's time for me to file two, four, six, eight, ten of these on the back. And um, I found this stuff for another project I'm working on 
called Joe's Sticky Stuff on Amazon. Um, I just stuck on my desk. It's kind of like those gel pad things that you put on your car's dashboard. My thoughts are that I can just, I haven't tried this yet, but I don't see why it wouldn't work. Line all my, there are as many as I can get on here, little domes, half domes on, oops, sticky stuff, and file them all at once. All right, now all we need is a file. So I'm hopefully going to have success. Just flattening backsides so that there's more area to sit on the ring shank and I'm trying to keep this thing level so I have flat spot obviously some of them are higher than others I didn't think of that it's all right I'll just take out the ones that are done ah okay you want to leave goodbye but you could do something like this at home with one. It would probably be a heck of a lot easier than trying to do five million of them. See, these guys look good down here. Get them out of there. Oh, that stuff's sticky, but it it peels off. It's pretty cool. Can you see that? Flat spot there with not 600 different angles on it, which is a good thing. Next step is we're going to solder these little uh, half domes onto the ring shanks after, wait, no, back up. First I have to reshape the ring shanks and then we're going to solder it on. So see ya in a few. So I put the seam on the middle. This is the finger shaped mandrel. I put it, that lined it up in the middle of the back of the mandrel. This is the front side of it, the top side's over here, this is the bottom. So I'm just going to start forming it and trying to keep that in the middle. I'm going under, sideways, ow, hit my finger. Okay, so now I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to, you can see the shape there. I'm going to put this on the top side. Yeah, I got a bruise there. See how stoic I was? It didn't even sit down and start sobbing. Off. I'm going to do it again on this side. And when you do this, kind of take a look to make sure it looks balanced, you know, so it doesn't get wonkily. Actually, this looks pretty good. Although, no, not really. Eh. I don't know. What do you think? I think it's good enough for a sample piece. And now I can check my size. Hopefully it's not too big. It's right at 8. So, that was good. Everybody, whether they have a size 8 or not, are getting eight size 8 rings <laughs> for this class. So um, once I'm done shaping, I'm going to go over to my factory here and my sandpaper. And I'm just going to run this on the sandpaper. I'm going to round these edges here. You could do this by hand or with a sanding stick. I never can seem to find mine. That's too thin. I need to beef that up. Work your edges. Um, theoretically, you don't have globs of solder in there. Don't do not. For cleaning up in here, they make these little barrel things. There's also um, those little flat barrels. Mm, this is the same kind of idea, but different type. And they're for cleaning inside of rings. You should, if you use just small amounts of solder, you shouldn't have hardly any cleanup because all the solder should have run down into the seam, um, which is why I am an advocate of minimal solder. If I need more, I can always put more in there. So, um, oh yeah, here's one. This kind of thing with the little sandpaper flappies on it. 
So I'm going to just clean up the inside of this and maybe run even, well, this grooves. If you run this over the edges, it grooves. So if you're going to use something uh, mechanical instead of uh, hand by hand, you know, use one of these sanding discs out here. Find one. You don't want to have, you don't have to do too much on this at all, actually. So I'm going to sand away just like this. Bye. Feel sorry for me. So put it in some kind of vise. Your ring shank, that is. Just put it. And you want to have it squared. It keeps, helps your eye to work better. So I want to file a flat spot right in the middle. By the way, when I do this, it looks like I'm filing back and forth like that. But I'm actually doing a lift on the way back. This is hard to do to get this nice and not 400 angles on it. You don't need a huge spot. It's just this place where this is going to sit. So it's not going to fly off. See? Just like that. I put two solder pallions and some flux that I forgot to heat up first onto the back of the dome. Move my shank out of there so the cross legs don't get hot. I heat this up. And I'm going to melt the um, solder on the back. I'm using hard still. Spritz. Oh, I'll go off. You want to get it as flat as you can with heat. Then we're going to pickle this and sand off some of this so that it sits flatter. I hate binding wire, so I go to all kinds of contortions to avoid it. Um, so I've got my flat spot down. I've got my solder sanded down a hair. I'm trying to line this up. And I'm using a, uh, a, a kiln stilt. And what I want to look for here is that my dome is centered this way and also this way. And that, like right now, the band's a little too far to the left. So I can adjust it a hair. But then I want to check again to make sure it's still on center. Doesn't look horrific. And I could do binding wire on this too, like I said. Um, but that just makes me want to cry. So... We're just going to go for it. Well, you can tell it's the end of a day and I have a deadline because, funny enough, I have ants all over my phone, which is what I'm filming with uh, because it was overcharging on my desk, and they got into the cat treats, so now there's 10,000 of them and I'm hiding over on the other side of the room. I have a class that starts in a little, two hours and 20 minutes, takes me a half hour to get there, so I have not a lot of time and I thought I hit record on this when I soldered it but it didn't so I'm gonna pretend that I'm soldering it again and what I said so witty you missed it I, I think I'm out of wit is that this is a much larger area up here a lot hotter uh, not hotter more Ga thicker gauge, more metal, blah, blah, blah. And it's got the added benefit of having a crosslock on here that sucks heat away. So most of the heat is going to be directed at the uh, ring shank itself. And you're just going to get your head down on the side without burning your face off. And watch for that solder to flow um, next to this, you know, the seam between the copper and the silver. So I'm going to pickle this, and we're going to do the pearl post after I kill this ant. I'll be right back. Ow! Don't! Don't kill me! No! Ah! Gotcha. Sort of. All right, so you probably don't have to do this since we already have a little hole in here, but it makes it so much easier to do this. Is back to our 20-gauge drill bit. 
little wax and I want to drill straight up and down. I'm going to drill right through the center of the ring. Okay, so now that we've got this hole running through the ring, I'm going to put the um, pearl post in and show you what we're going to do. One of these days I need to film me making a movie. It's like so scary. <laughs> Tripping over this cord on my microphone is like 40 feet long. I get it wrapped around everything. It's really exciting. I have cats coming in begging and, you know, jewelry making. Okay, so that's flux. Flux. So there's our hole that hopefully our wire is going to squish into. Come on. Fit before. There we go. So you want it in there nice and snug. And I'm going to heat this up so this flux grips everything. Just a little heat down here. And I'm going to turn it over and see how far I got that wire in. Hmm, not very far. Well, I'm going to have to try to get that wire in when this cools off because that will fill that hole in the back and you won't see it. I have to maybe trim this and tap it a little bit. So I'm going to do that. I should show you what I'm doing. Um, I'm grabbing these with the pliers. I trimmed it a lot and I'm kind of wiggling it down in there. One hopes. I want to see it poking out the back. If it's incredibly difficult to get in, you can always go back and open that hole up a little bit. but. This really should be tight fit. Try to keep this somewhere near square. So it's it's also check your solder joint. <laughs> if you're pushing on this and your cap comes off, you know your solder didn't flow. Okay, I'm gonna call that done. Feels snug. Snug as a bag in the rug. God, it's a weird person. Okay, so we're gonna prop this little bugger up wash my hands. And flux. I'm going to put some flux back here. Two. And I'm tr debating. Um, I could, I'm going to, I think I might put a little tiny piece. Under, uh, I'm loath to do it. I think what I'll do is I'll put the solder here up against the wall of the um, post and touching the, the base of this. And then I'll heat from back here. And then with any luck, this solder will flow down down the roll oops sorry <laughs> down, down the dang post I'm losing it and I have to go teach a class poor people ah. all right Swata. I need a little tiny piece because it's a little tiny join We want perfection because Mama has to get ready. There it is. Yeah, right, can you go in there? Okay, we're gonna call that Denny Dunn. Do I have any solder in there? Yes, teeny little piece. So we want we want running down here. So we're gonna heat where we want to run, and uh, medium would be good at this point for the solder type. could do that if you wanted. I think I use hard because I like to make my life extremely difficult at all times. All right, so I'm going to pickle that, go murder some more ants, and we will put the pearl on. Um, trying to decide if I want liver or sulfur at first. Uh, I don't know. We'll figure it out. So uh, a couple of last tidbits. I've decided I'm going to liver of sulfur at first before putting the pearl in because sometimes the epoxy gets on the interior of the cup and if that happens, the liver of sulfur will not take there so it could look splotchy. So I'm gonna liver this first. Um, doing a really um, 
the scrubby finish essentially and uh, I already did the band I'm just gonna do my cup here Scrubby's a little large oh look what I did to my pin just roughing it up because I like that brush look and this gives you a great brush look so um, I also yanked on this to make sure that it was actually soldered that's that's important see we don't have a ton of soldered goop in there so that's good another thing is you want to make sure that your pearl fits um, it needs to be tight but if it doesn't go on and I'm going to shorten this post a lot so I'm going to drill this out a little bit more put it in my water get my Duda on my drill bit. Just gonna drill through this a little. Come here. You want you always want to do it with oh, wrong machine. If you do this uh, with a Dremel, be careful you don't electrocute yourself. There's no power down at this end on a flex shaft. I'm just going, just kind of pushing it a little on the sides. And then I'm going to check my fit, although I could trim this quite a bit. Take that off. Oh. All right, let's see if we fit. Oh, for goodness sakes. Well, I guess I need to push a little harder. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go liver of sulfur it, and then we'll come back for the the putting the epoxy on it okay I gotta charge my phone with the ants okay before my battery goes dead we're gonna do a couple of little things um, I could do a better job on cleaning this up but I'm in a rush so I livered it see how nice and black that got so what I'm gonna do here I trim this by the way be careful do this slowly the trimming uh, you don't want to do it so much that it doesn't come out the end. Mine fits on it and it just to the very top. I would have liked a little bit more because I was going to tap it down. Uh, but what you want to do now is make little squishies on the wire. They're going to act as um, things to hold the glue, the, the uh, epoxy. So just give it some squeezes so that you dent up the wire for the, the post for the pearl. And then you're going to want to have some kind of brush. Um, they make these little tiny brushes. Or hold on, we're going to go for a big ride. Woo! Or you can make a toothpick pick brush. Okay, what happened to the hammer I had two and a half seconds ago? Oh, there it is. Jeez. So organized, I'm scary. So um, I, I use this end, but you can use whatever end. My chasing hammer. And I'm just flaring out the tip of this and making a toothpick brush and you can trim it and make it really pretty if you so desire I I don't know if I'm gonna do that or not it sounds hard oh here's trimmers what the heck okay so now I have a little brush for my glue and I think I'm just gonna use Loctite oh my goodness so you take your little brush and you want to put the Loctite around the peg. I'm trying not to get it all over the inside. And now I'm just going to slide my pearl on top. Maybe. And push it all the way down. See how it just, you can barely see it on the top. So, uh, yeah. That's the ring. We did it. So this is Soldering Project 2 and hopefully a series that I'll be doing. I've started it. I've got two. So this needs to dry for 24 hours. Of course, I have to wear it tonight because I have to show it to the class. But if I think of anything else, I'll blabble on. Uh, I actually have 15 minutes to get dressed and a half hour to lay on the couch. Woohoo! Thank you. See you soon. Bye.